This is a mess, but in just a few minutes, you're going to see how this turns into a complete Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro live streaming setup. You all want to miss this. Hey everyone, my name is Zephan Moses Blacksburg. Welcome back to my channel. And as you can see, I've got a ton of stuff here. That's because today I'm going to show you the full setup from start to completion with the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. Now today I don't have four full cameras to use because we're actually using one, two, and three different cameras just to film myself. So we're splitting off one camera and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I won't be able to fill all four HDMI slots, but I will still show you a great example of how I would typically live stream in the field, some of the gear that I'm using and my whole process. So for starters, we actually have a brand new Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro today. Uh, I do have one that I had been using for quite some time and I realized that, you know, I'd really like to have a backup just in case anything ever happened or, you know, I think there's a lot of benefits to having a second one. So this is literally fresh out of the box. Um, we're just going to pull this out and open it right away. Some people, when they originally got their A10 Mini Pros, said that they weren't shipping with power cords. That hasn't been my experience. So, um, you know, if you didn't get a power cord, I apologize for that. It shouldn't happen that way. Um, but we'd want to figure out what's going on there. I would contact Blackmagic and see what their plan is. But um, nothing different about this one. Same A10 Mini Pro that we've been using and loving all along. So I'm going to put this box off to the side. Don't need any of this stuff. Now, this particular ATEM may be out of date and might need a software update just because uh, you know it hasn't. It's been sitting in a box for a little while, so we'll see that when we get it plugged in and connected to the computer. Um, and I'm going to try my best to show you all different camera angles. So, you know, we'll take this camera from time to time and flip it around, and we'll show you some close-ups so you can see ATEM Mini Pro, our four inputs on the back. So we're going to try to show you guys some different perspectives. Be careful with those cardboard boxes. Cut myself. <laughs> so uh, the one thing that doesn't come with the A10 Mini Pro that a lot of people get confused by is there's no USB-C cable. So you do need a USB-C cable. This one is from IO Gear. Uh, this can connect and charge. It's a five gigabit per second cable, so it can carry data, and it's 6.6 .6 feet long. So I recommend the longer ones. I do have a shorter one that I started with a while back. It was maybe three feet long, and I found that it was just too short um, as far as my table placement went for setting everything up. And so I definitely think having that, that longer one is going to be more beneficial. So let's get the A10 Mini plugged in and powered up. I've got a couple power strips here on the table. Uh, we're going to kind of make a mess of things and then clean it up as we go. So I highly recommend getting yourself a couple of these longer power strips because it's going to make your life so much easier when you're on set uh, trying to get this stuff set up and make sure that you plug in everything. So this gets powered in right to the back here. I'm going to take my little DJI Pocket 2 and show you a close up. So we're just plugging in right to the back. It's a locking connector. And it's on instantly. There is no on off button. Uh, this is just always on all the time. That's what you get. Uh, and I'm okay with that. I'm not really too worried about having to power it on or off. Uh, you know, it is kind of nerve wracking just unplugging it, being done with it. But that's just how Blackmagic does it with pretty much all of their equipment. And uh, the next thing is a little tabletop tripod. This one is from Zedio, Z E A D I O. It was just a, a off-brand I found on Amazon and they just so happen to make these nice little tabletop tripods. This is going into my Atomos Shogun 7. This is my monitor and this itself can actually be used as a four camera switcher. It does have four SDI inputs and a touchscreen switcher but I typically just use this for my recording so that I can record in Apple ProRes. has some nice high quality footage of the program feed of the live stream and I'll get to multi-view in a minute because I know that that's something that a lot of people ask about, they wonder, you know, if you're using up that HDMI slot for a program feed, how do you get multi-view? And I've got a great little treat for that. We did do another video that talks about my multi-view monitor. 
and you can check that out on the channel as well, but I'm going to show it just in the full, full setup here. Same thing with this, another locking power connector. So I'm gonna show you on our little, our little close-up cam, just a locking connector. Twist that in. I currently have a two terabyte solid state drive in there already for the recording, and that gets me hours upon hours of recording time. Press and hold our button to start it up. And get that going. These are a little bit slow to start up. Uh, it takes probably a good, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. So just be aware of that. Don't be afraid if you're using the Atomos gear and it, it takes a little while. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in just a small HDMI cable from the program out of the ATEM Mini. So we're going to pull our little guy over here for the close up. So our program out of the ATEM Mini or HDMI output, there's only one of them, right here on the back. And that's going to go right to the input of our Shogun. And uh, apologies if this is a very long one today, guys. This is, there's going to be a lot happening here. Um, it's a little bit messy. There's a lot of cables and things, but I've got A10 Mini Pro, and now I want to go ahead and just put a camera into it just to try to get something coming out of it. So we're going to plug in our camera into input one. So that's kind of it on that side. Now I am seeing that the program feed is not coming out into the Ninja Recorder. So there's a couple things I might do to troubleshoot that. One is I might change out the cable. That's really the first step that I'll try out. So we're gonna just kind of chuck this one off to the side. I always recommend keeping tons of HDMI cables around because it's totally a possibility that they go bad. Some of them are cheap, some of them are low quality. So, um, you know, just be ready for that at any point in time. And look, this is fresh out of the box. So maybe it needs to be updated. I mean. There's a lot of things that could be going on here with this one. Um, the other thing that I'll do sometimes, yep, there we go. So now we've got it on our monitor. I'll uh, show you guys with our little close-up cam. So now you can see we've got our program feed on our monitor, and also I can switch down here on the A10 Mini. We have our multi-view and our program button. So if I switch to multi-view, then you can actually see the multi-view on here. But since I want to record a high quality feed, I'm going to just keep this as the program out. So again, it could have just been the cable. Um, and that's something that, you know, I'll put this off to the side and make sure that we double check this cable later. Now, we've got one camera in, we've already got a feed going out. So we know we have our program feed. The next thing to do is to start setting up our multi-viewer. And this is where another piece of equipment comes in. And we did make another video about this. So in this case back here, this is the Apache 4800 case. I get these from Harbor Freight Tools. Fantastic store for just really affordable protective cases. They're kind of like knockoffs of the, uh, the Pelican cases. So this is the SeaTech, also known as Feel World, uh, ATEM 156 monitor. It just stands for 15.6 inches. That's how big it is. But the cool thing with this monitor is that it's got four HDMI inputs and four HDMI loop outs. So what we can do, I'll show you a little shot of the back here. So four HDMI inputs right there and four loop outputs. So what we can do is we can actually take all four cameras into this monitor and loop them out into the A10 Mini Pro, still retaining our HDMI output. That's really kind of the concern here is people wanted to see all four cameras so they're not switching blindly, but they also wanted to retain the ability to record that program feed from the HDMI out, or maybe they wanted to send it to a projector screen or a TV like we're doing right here. So this monitor, let's get this plugged up, comes with a pretty, pretty lengthy power cable, um, definitely enough for what I've needed. I don't feel like it's been too short. I mean. You can see there, we're getting at least six, seven feet out of this. So the cable mess, I am not cleaning it up for the purposes of this video. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, I will typically on site with a client clean this up and make this look prettier. 
So just plugs into power in the back right there. I'll put this usually really close to the A10 mini because we've got to loop out our HDMI feed. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to bring our little camera over here, give you guys the close up view of how this all looks. So the on off button just here on the bottom right, this turns on. Now obviously I'm not going to see anything yet because there's nothing being fed into it. So I'm going to remove the HDMI cable that I had plugged into the A10 mini. And that plug is going to get changed over to input one or HDMI one on the back. So now on our little camera over here, you can see we do have input one in the quad view, this multi view. This has to be on mode F4 in order to be able to see that. Now I need to get it back out into the A10 Mini Pro. So we need to take another HDMI cable. I usually use very short ones for this because we don't really need a, a longer run anyways. So I've got a cable that's roughly six feet here. And this one's going to come out of the loop out of input one that was in the CTEC monitor and into the input of the A10 Mini Pro. And I'll typically just kind of loop the HDMI cables underneath the stand that's holding up this monitor and then just straight into the back of the A10 Mini. Now for demonstration purposes, as you can see on our little camera here, we've got you know our camera one, you can see that, and then camera one also on our program out. Um, one really important piece to know though about how the A10 Mini Pro works is in HDMI input one on the A10 Mini Pro has the ability for YUV and RGB color, meaning sometimes you're going to have trouble with certain cameras not being compatible with that input. So if you find that, I typically will throw the computer input into input one. And that's also why over here on my small monitor, you actually see I have a label for camera one plus PC because the PC or the, uh, the MacBook Pro in my case is usually what I'm gonna be using for that. So that brings me to the computer. So let's go ahead and get our computer set up. Now I've got a MacBook Pro right here, ready to go. Computers can be great for video playback. Uh, they can be great for putting slides up on screen if you don't want to use the built-in software control. Um, they can also be good for you know, anything else that you need to show, like maybe you need to show a Zoom gallery view and bring a Zoom into a live stream. So with this computer, what I'll do is either take a USB-C to HDMI adapter and just take that out, or you can actually find these awesome cables online that are USB-C to HDMI in one cable, so you don't need the adapter. And the only issue that I've found here is because of computer resolutions, computer frame rates, is sometimes the CTEC monitor won't like what you're feeding to it and looping through to the ATEM, so you may see it in the CTEC monitor, and then for whatever reason, uh, it's not making it through that loop out to the ATEM. So a device that I also bring into all of my live streams is the Decimator. This is the Decimator MDHX, and I absolutely love this device because what it does is it allows me to take either an SDI input in or an HDMI input in, and I can not only split it off to something else like a TV screen, a projector, uh, you know, anything else that I have, but it has a scaler built in. And what that means is if for whatever reason, say the computer was sending me some wonky resolution and I needed to bring it in as 1920 by 1080, yes, I understand the A10 Mini has scalers built in, but because we're looping it through this monitor to get our multi-view, that's where trouble might happen. So that's why I usually put the decimator in line, and then it gives me the freedom to be able to split off this computer to other monitors if need be. So this is just going into the HDMI input here. The decimator will automatically detect that a computer is plugged in. This also helps me create a second monitor for the computer. So if I wanted to play a video, I could just like drag it over to the second screen and I can see it over here right on my multi-view. So I've got this coming in here. I'm gonna just kind of hide our cables back there. I need to take an HDMI cable out of it and bring that into 
our monitor, our multi-view monitor. And I'm going to take our little camera guy here again to show you guys. So this is what the decimator looks like. There's two HDMI, there's one HDMI input and one HDMI output on this side. And then on this side, there's an SDI input, an SDI output one, and SDI output two. So you can actually output two SDIs. And uh, that's a really fantastic tool to just have in your arsenal to be able to change over and convert anything and everything, but also split it out at the same time. So I'm taking the HDMI output just for today's purposes. This is going to go into our multi-view monitor, and I'm going to switch out uh, camera one with the computer because remember what I just said about our input one on the A10 Mini? So camera one is now going to be technically in input two. The computer will be in input one. And now I need to loop that HDMI out because as of right now, since I switched the two, we're only seeing our computer which is plugged into input one. So our handy dandy HDMI cables. Um, so this is going to come out of the input two loop out. And again, like I said, I usually just kind of loop these underneath of the screen here. This will go into input two. So now, get our little close up cam. We have computer and in input one camera and in input two, and you can see our program feed right here on the Atomos monitor so I can switch back and forth between one and two. So we've got confirmation that we can see both of those. Now here, just for example purposes and because I'm monitoring this off to the side on a huge TV screen, you'll see this is not a clean HDMI output. This is actually showing our menus and all of our information on screen. And so again, just for demonstration purposes, this is just so I can monitor and see all that stuff. Uh, we're outputting that information over the HDMI cable. You would not normally do that. You would disable that when you're on a live stream. So camera one, camera two are in. Now we've got to think about how sound is going to work. And typically people are running into issues when they plug their sound into the mic inputs one and two, the three and a half millimeter inputs on the ATEM because they'll say, oh, you know, the sound's out of sync or we're having issues. Uh, the first thing you want to check is in the software control, there are settings for mic versus line. So make sure that you're sending the right audio signal into the A10 Mini, and the A10 Mini Pro is actually set up for that. So you need to choose micro line in the software. Uh, and then second, you need to make sure that the on button is set. So I have to go back to our close-up camera here because on the pad here, there's on and off buttons for mics one and two, and then for all the mics on the cameras. So the way that I've typically try to avoid audio sync issues is I will send audio into my camera one, my main camera, or my wide shot camera, and I turn that on by hitting the on button here. And now as I speak, you can actually confirm this by seeing the levels on my program out recording. So now I know that I'm getting the audio levels that I sent into camera one, and that's coming through on the program out recording. And that's usually what we'll do. If we've got more microphones, more speakers, we'll run it into the Zoom Live Track L8 sound mixer, and then we'll send that back into our main camera so that the audio and the video signal are hitting the, not only the multi viewer, but then also hitting the A10 Mini Pro at exactly the same time. And this prevents any issues with sync or things like that. So you can see the, uh, the computer's plugged in, uh, the camera's plugged in. In an ideal world, I'd actually have two other cameras plugged in so I could switch between, but uh, I'm really just focused now on getting the actual stream set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these HDMI cables. We're gonna place them off to the side. Now it's time to talk about internet. So I will always, always, always stream on a wired internet connection. I have only once ever streamed on Wi-Fi and it's only because that was pretty much our only choice that we had with the location, but I urge you do not do not uh, live stream over Wi-Fi. It's just simply not reliable enough as something that you can do as a professional live streamer and for the long term. Now there are other solutions that we'll probably talk about in another video like bonding solutions, cellular bonding solutions, hotspots, things of that nature. But again, if you take a hotspot to an event or a location where there's a hundred other people that are using the same cell phone towers, you're also gonna run into trouble. 
So today, for demonstration purposes, we actually ran, I have like a 150 foot ethernet cable, and we ran it over here just so I can access this quickly and, and pull this out. But basically this is ethernet, it's plugged into my router in the back there, and we wanna run this into a switch. So I've got just a simple, a uh, TP-Link five port gigabit desktop switch. And the reason why we do that is because if I needed to plug in more devices than just one, I can basically split off this internet signal. So if I wanted to make sure that my laptop was on the internet, if I wanted to make sure the A10 mini was on the internet, if I had a second laptop that I needed on the internet, everything will just get split out of this one switch. So ethernet's going into input one here. It's all powered up, just sitting this here off to the side. And my second computer, which is now going to become my streaming computer, we're gonna pull this out here and get this set up. Try to make a little bit of room. This is the one that needs to have a wired internet connection. So let's open this up, get this turned on. The company I use is Uni, or Uni, uh, U-N-I. They make these adapters for USB-C to H, or to, um, they do make the ones to US, USB-C to HDMI, but they make adapters from USB-C to ethernet uh, so that I can make sure that this computer gets internet plugged in. So I'm gonna take this one adapter and I've got a smaller, much shorter ethernet cable off to the side here. I'm gonna plug this in, go to my computer, plug that in, plug it into our switch. And technically it should be getting internet, but I actually have the Wi-Fi turned on still. So I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi off and the way that I usually confirm it is one, I just open up an internet browser window and just go to you know, any website that I wouldn't normally go to, uh, you know, whether it's apple.com or cnn.com, something I'm not going to on a daily basis. And if those load, that's typically a good sign. The other thing you can do is go to speedtest.net and run a speed test to make sure that your internet speed is fast enough. I'll have to do a totally separate video on internet speeds, but I typically won't stream on an internet that doesn't have at least 10 to 15 megabits up and down. Upload is obviously more important for live streaming, but if the connection is any weaker than that, you're really working with a bad connection. And fortunately here, we're working on a fiber connection. So right now I'm getting 910 megabits per second download, and it looks like somewhere in the neighborhood of 850 to 900 megabits per second upload. So we're not gonna have any problems streaming on that side. But this is pretty much our setup. Uh, I'll show you guys with our little kind of behind the scenes cam here. Um, so you can see back here, this one computer would be our PowerPoint slides computer. So uh, let's just bring something up full screen here, or maybe I'll even bring up a, uh, a YouTube video. Let's, uh, Relaxing jazz. So we'll bring up this video here. I'm going to mute it. So I've got a video playing back now into input one, but why do we not see it over here? Because this is the second screen. So we actually have to go back here, get out of full screen mode, drag this over to our second screen. You can kind of see it down here on our monitor. We're going to drag this over to our second screen. Then we can full screen this. And this is the beauty of having this multi viewer is I can basically make sure that the video is there and ready to go before taking it live. If I didn't have that set up, then I wouldn't have been able to make sure that this was good to go. So that's just another benefit of having the multi view monitor. I really think it's a fantastic piece of equipment. And uh, then you can switch between, you know, your live camera shot. So you can see it down here to your video. And the other thing you wanna make sure of too is that your audio is turned on for the video. So right now it's actually turned off. So you wanna make sure your audio is on too, and then your sound levels will actually come out over your program feed. So just be aware of those things. This is kind of our simple setup for getting live streaming going with two to three cameras, one computer for either video playback or for you know popping slides up on screen and never having to get into that software control panel. It's still important that you get into that and we'll make another video later, but this is kind of my simple form of setting up an entire live stream and still retaining your multi-view, still keeping the ability to see your program feed and record it on the Shogun recorder and then uh, I think last but not least is we didn't plug in our USB-C cable. So 
getting this plugged into our live streaming computer. So just USB-C out, the only port out from the uh, ATEM Mini, right into our streaming computer over here, our wired internet streaming computer. And once that's plugged in, I'll typically verify this on the Mac. What I love about QuickTime Player is you can open up QuickTime, hit File, New Movie Recording, and then you can select whether you want the webcam or if you want to see just the, uh, the built-in webcam or if you want to see the USB-C. And mine defaulted already and is actually showing me the program feed. So that's a very simple way before I'm going to stream live, before you open OBS, before you go to Facebook, anywhere else, to make sure that that signal is coming through. And you can see sound levels. You could even record video with this as well. So just making sure that everything looks good to go before you go live is super important understanding how to you know, debug and troubleshoot and make sure that this stuff is set up properly. But that's our basic setup. Thank you so much for watching this long. I know it was a longer video, a little wider, revealing some of the studio here. But if you like this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Give us a thumbs up if you want to see more of this, where I'll dive even deeper into some of these things like the decimator, like how the switch is set up, or even adding more cameras to that multi-viewer. And we'll see you back here next time.